Howdy ho everyone, I'm Solly Bardfuss of Pros, a contemporary C64 cracking and game development crew, and welcome to another episode of C64 Code Hacking Tutorials. If you're a member of the C64 Code Hacking Closed Facebook group, you'll be watching this a full day before it's released on YouTube, and in glorious 180p. And you would have even seen the video I just put off with no sound. Whoops. So join now, we have over 200 active members, and it's the friendliest group on Facebook, I swear. So far we've covered the basics of coding 6510 assembly, but to create your first program, a one-line text scrolly, you need some background on the screen and graphics modes and how to set them with VicChip registers. Now, for some, the VicChip is shrouded in mystery, but I will share with you a few simple tips for much more easily understanding where C64 screens and character sets are stored. Let's start with screens. C64 screens are comprised of 20, 25 lines of 40 characters each, making a total of 1024 bytes for each screen. By default, the C64 screen is stored at 0400 in, me in memory in hexadecimal, and for the most part, that's a great place for storing a screen as it's outside of normal memory you use for code. And the color memory is always stored at D D800 and also takes up 1024 bytes. You can set the location of the C64 screen with the VIC register D018. As you can see, when we view the D018 in the device monitor, it's set to 15 in hexadecimal. How do we make sense of this number? Well, most programming manuals will tell you to set the lower four bits of D018 to set the screen location, and the higher four bits to set the cursor location. Or is it the other way around? But who really wants to work out binary numbers, am I right? So I came across a very simple trick recently that makes it much easier to work out the locations of screens and character sets. Simply split the hexadecimal value in D018 into two numbers. So in this case it would be 1 and 5. Then get out your hex calculator and multiply those numbers by 1024 or, or 0400 in hex. And this will give you the exact locations. So in this case the screen is at 0400 and the car set is at 2000. Take note, however, if you're using this method to rip car sets and screens, be aware that the CIA chip can also be set to select a different bank in memory. So if it were set to set the second bank, the screen would be at 4400 and the screen at 6000. So knowing all this, we can start playing with screen and graphics modes. As well as setting the screen and car set locations, you might also want to set graphics modes. This is done by setting the D01 and D016, uh, D011 and D016 registers which are use, also used for vertical and horizontal hardware scroll. I'm afraid that in this case, until you get used to it at least, your only option is to use binary numbers. D011 is used for choosing character or bitmap mode, and D016 is used for setting high res or multicolor mode. Combining the two, we can set a number of different graphics modes. For D011, bit 6 sets extended color text mode, uh, which we'll go into in another episode, which basically gives you four extra background colors for your text and restricts the amount of characters you have in your text to a quarter of the character set. And bit 5 enables bitmap mode for koala pictures, for instance. Bit 4 sets blank screen, which can be used for lots of cool demo effects. And bit 3 sets a 24 or 25 row display. And bit 0 to 2 set the vertical scroll. For D016, bit 6 and 7 are unused. Bit 5 sets multicolor mode in text or bitmap mode. Bit 3 sets 38 or 40 column display. And bit, bit 0 to 2 are used to set the horizontal smooth scroll position. Now, you want to set 24 or 25 row display or 38 or 40 column display when you're scrolling the screen horizontally or vertically uh, so that the character in this side of the screen you're scrolling is covered up. So, to combine this knowledge into code, we'll assemble a simple routine to display a koala picture. Yes, we're going to look at source code. This picture is from a rare commercial suit game, The Final Attack, which are ripped using Action Replay Mark 6 cartridges picture save feature. Too lazy to remember how to display a koala picture, I did a search on the web and found a sm nice small routine by Linus, but it corrupted the picture somehow. Gremlins in my code. Luckily, you, you do make a few friends in the C64 scene, and one of them was on hand this time to help. Jonas Lindberg, or the mad scientist of a kudu force, Fix the routine. And if you'd like to know more about Jonas, I interviewed him in the zeroth issue of Ink Do 2 So as you can see here, the qu the Koala picture screen in color memory is loaded into memory with a binary binary command, and then the the screen and color memory are relocated in, into 
the 0400 and DA100 and display it. It's pretty simple, really. It's set to uh, execute at 0900. You set the background on the screen to zero. Transfer all the data to the screen in the color memory. Set bitmap mode, multicolor mode, and set the screen in 400 and bitmap in 2000, which is pretty standard. And then just jump in a loop. There's no interrupts, no nothing to do here except to display a picture. And then at 2000, you include a binary with the exclamation mark binary command, title pick dot prog, comma comma two. And comma comma two means that it loads your program as data and ignores the first two load bytes that tell it where to load the program. So as you can see, to display a multicolor image is pretty simple, really. If you would like to know the memory maps for common C64 graphics formats, go to the codebase article C64 graphic file format specs, linked in the description. Well, that's all for your introduction to Commodore 64 screening graphics modes. Next time we'll be looking at more advanced graphics display modes that have been invented by the demo scene. Oh, but I forgot to assemble this program. What am I thinking? So we just compile in C64 Studio, it's that easy. Go to the folder, Crawler Display, and this folder will be in the private Bitbucket repository source code um, repository. And there's also another five scripts in there that you can look at. So if you, if you want, this would be a good time to become a patron to the project on my Patreon page and pledge $5 a month, because then you'll get access to the source code and you won't get it any other way except typing it while I'm describing it on the screen, which won't be much fun. So if you want to follow along, please pledge $5 and you get access to a whole bunch of things and it's described on the page. Now we get the nice display prog, drag in device, press F3, go to monitor, G0900 where our program is stored, and BAM! We have ripped and displayed a koala picture. It's that easy. In the meantime, before the next episode, because I skipped a bit there, why don't you pick up a copy of the new magazine, Ink do 2 from the Blurb Shop, for only $2 US. 68 full colour pages with an article version of my introduction to 6510 assembly coding, as well as a host of interviews with game and de demo developers, who go into code in their interviews. Note that future issues won't be nearly as big as this zero earth issue, and they'll have far more of a focus on code. It's just that I had a bunch of interview articles that are unused, and I felt they'd look cool in the magazine, so sue me. <laughs> uh, and also have some big news. Um, later today, I'll be launching Future Vision Designs. Not my, my not my original demo crew, but a new game publishing company, publishing Commodore 64 games by myself and Jonas Lindbergh and anyone else we can get on board. Now we'll be having a one ninety nine one dollar ninety nine range of budget games that that we just crap out. No, I'm just kidding. Um, Jonas has made a, a, quite a few games so far that he ideally sees as part of a budget range like they had in the old days. And we'll also have a premium range that will run at $7.99, which I think you'll agree, for a modern Commodore 64 game, $7.99 is a great retail price. Now, that's it for this episode. It's goodbye for me, and hello to code. Later!